While the men held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, Follow Israel, fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by your own power or godliness we have made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disowned, disowned the holy and the righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is, Jesus in, it is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him, as you can see. Now, fellow Israelites, I know what you have, you, that you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders. But this is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, saying that his Messiah would suffer. Repent then and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord, and that he may send the Messiah who has been appointed to you, even Jesus. Heaven must receive him until the time comes for God to restore everything, as he promised long ago through the holy prophets. Thanks be to God. Uh, looked, received this passage to, um, to preach on this morning. Uh, there was a kind of a, a title next to it, and uh, it said, Take Your Opportunities. And I puzzled at that one, and I read the passage, and then it dawned on me. And uh, I want to tell you a little illustration of uh, when the junction was open one day, uh, this is some years ago, there were quite a number of teenage boys, mid-teenagers, fairly boisterous, and uh, they came in regularly. And, uh, and John Crawford, our manager, had... Well, he could cope, could John, uh, but it was uh, hard work. And then one day, one of the lads said to him, why do you bother about us? And John immediately said, I care about you because God cares for you. And Jesus cares for you as he cares for me. And then, conversation followed, and he gave the boy a New Testament of the Bible. He said, take that home lad and read it. And then he said, I can't read. But my grand can. And so the boys were seen going out to the junction with this Bible open, walking down the road. Now, I don't know the end of that story, but I do know that happened. Now, what was John doing? He'd loved those boys in his way and cared for them as other people had in the junction. And then one day, they said, why are you doing this to us? Why? And there was the opportunity. What happened here, last week, we, Richard told us the story uh, in Acts uh, chapter 3 of the man who had been healed uh, at, uh, uh, by the, the two apostles. And so our, our chapter here now uh, follows on from that story. And uh, it begins by saying, as we heard there, while the man who had been healed held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to see what all this was about. And Peter saw this. That was his opportunity. And he spoke to them and said, and you heard what he said in our reading this morning. And uh, it was because of what a miracle had happened, because John had loved those boys, one day the opportunity came and to speak to them, to them about God and the Lord Jesus Christ. So Peter used this opportunity. And what he did was, he spoke, it's basically the second, what we call the second sermon uh, 
in the book of the Acts, in the Christian church, really. And, and uh, he spoke, basically, the simple gospel, as we will see in a moment, message. And we shall see that today, as we're coming up to a mission weekend, but every day, and in our church this morning, then we, there's an opportunity as we preach the simple gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, that people shall respond and come to faith in him. So it's really appropriate that we're looking at this passage today. And indeed, it may it, it be a challenge for us as we, go, we witness the coming week, uh, as we respond, and, and as we respond to people's questions, that we can tell them the simple, basic gospel truths. Uh, and and here, here it is. And it may be a, a challenge to someone today, this morning, in their own lives, as we look at this. And I've been helped, as I looked at this passage, by uh, some words from John Stott, which um, he, he kind of gave me the framework for what I'm saying this morning. And uh, he began by, by this, and which is our framework for today. Three questions what I want to ask you, what I want to pose to you this morning. With all of us, we're concerned about time. You'll be looking at your watches in a minute to see how long the preacher's going on. We're, or my dinner's spoiling, whatever. We're, we're concerned about time and, uh, and how old we are and how young we are and so on. And uh, three questions. One is, are we a person who always is looking back? Now, my job was to teach about the back, so I'm not deriding the back. But are we people who, who, who the back dominates our thinking today? Or are we people who are living in the future? We hope this is going to happen. Or are we people who actually live just for the moment in the present? Well, in the past, you know, if only. If only I'd not done that. If only. And we have... Some of us, many regrets, as we think oh, we have past memories. And some of us maybe have a deep guilt about the past. Some of what's happened. Things which keep cropping up in our minds and accuse us. Oh dear me. And we have a guilty conscience about it. And we can't get rid of it. Maybe, maybe you're like that. And sometimes it dominates our living now. What has happened in the past, which we don't seem to, to shake off. Or maybe we, we're constantly thinking about the future, what is going to happen, and it worries us. As we look at the state of the world, as we're bringing our, uh, a, a young, lovely baby into the world, we think about the future for what, what it's going to be like. And maybe as parents, we're anxious, or as grandparents, uh, and uh, we worry about it. Uh, and so we look forward, maybe with hope one day, as Christians we do. But some of us, if only I could win the lottery in the future, what life would be different? If only um, all my problems would go. Or we have a fear of illness, or of old age, or of being, losing our job, or about our children, or ultimately the fear of death, the future. Are we people who live like that? Or are we people who live just for the now, the present, you know? We, we blot out the thoughts of the past, what's happened. We blot out what's to come. And so we just live for the moment, the opportunities of the now. Our life is so brief, let's live it up and, and enjoy ourselves. For tomorrow we might die, but we shut our minds to, to, to things like that. Well, those three, three questions uh, I posed to you this morning. Where, where are we? The gospel, I put it to you this morning, in answer to those questions, is good news. Uh, and it's good news, as this passage shows us, in Jesus, because he deals with all three. And uh, they're all linked together. The past, the future, the present, in the Lord Jesus. And you can't have one without the other. You can't have two without the other. You need all three together. And Jesus is the one who can free us, whatever it is that which dominates us today. And in particular in that chapter, in verses, I want to read this to you. And as I read this to you, I want you to see if you can think here about the past, the present, and the future, what's to be, from verse 19 to 21. I'll read this. 
Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. That times of refreshing may come from the Lord and that he may send the Messiah who has been appointed for you, even Jesus. Did you get anything about the past there, the present or the future? Well, first of all, the past. It talks there, does it? It says about repent that your sins, your past, may be blotted out. The very possibility and the knowledge of that, actually, if it's new to us, then it's thrilling good news is the gospel. Because it says that the things which maybe haunt us or concern us, and I think it's, it's, it's basic, isn't it? It's basic to the Christian faith. This idea of getting rid of our guilt, getting rid of our guilt, because all of us, I mean, that's the gospel. I'm afraid it's bad news to begin with, because all of us are guilty. All of us, in our, in our conscience maybe, we, we have things which we were ashamed of to admit. And, uh, and it, some of us maybe, it keeps nagging us still. And uh, we can't get rid of it. It taunts us. And we know there is a need to get rid of it. There's a need for forgiveness. And we know that the scripture says that actual fact, that sin, and linked with that, is spiritual death. That's what the Bible teaches constantly throughout. And, uh, which means separation from God in this world and the next. But you know, this message of Peter, he realized that there was something to say here. He said, but God has done something. God has done something. And you people, he said, to the people there, who, who uh, were the Jews there, they ought to have known their, their scriptures. He said in verse 18, the prophets have, have told us about it. In verse 13, even from Abraham's time, it was told that one day, one day the promise is that he would send his son. Moses in verse 22 and so on. Samuel, it says later on in the passage, and all the prophets spoke of this day. And you know what's happened, said Peter? You people were in ignorance, but you killed him, the one who came. You killed the Messiah. Why? Well, it was destined for Jesus to die, he said. Why? To turn from your wicked ways. It says that in that last verse which was read to us this morning. And, uh, and, and also in, the, um, in these little verses I've told you there, it says he can blot out your sins. That's why he came. And God has come to find us in the Lord Jesus Christ. Indeed, when he went to the cross, he came to die for us. We deserve that death spiritual death. But no, Jesus, Jesus took our guilt, our shame from all the past and it was upon him. He died in our place. In my place, we sing, condemned, he stood. He sealed my pardon with his blood. He felt desertion when he was on the cross. Why have you forsaken me, Lord? Separation from God. But, it says here, if, if we repent, Lord have mercy on us. It says our sins will be blotted out. I want you to look at some verses from scripture here. Jen is going to put them on the screen one by one. And we're going to, here we are, Isaiah 38, 7. It says, you have put all my sins behind your back. What does that mean? Jen, over the next one. They're out of sight, right? Behind your back. All the sins we've committed, if we put our trust in Jesus, they're behind our back. And the next one is out of sight. Next one. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our sins from us. And the next one, Jen. You hurl our sins into the depths of the sea. Out of sight, out of reach. Can't reach them. They've gone. And the next one. 
Blessed is the one whose sins are forgiven, whose sins are covered, whose sin the Lord does not count against them. And they are out of account. It counts them not against us anymore. The Bible's full of these, and there's some more. The next one. I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. That's wonderful. They're out of mind, of God, of memory. And another one. According to your com great compassion, blot out my transgression. Hide your face from my sins. Blot out my iniquity. That's what was in our passage. And that was, that is out of existence. Out of, what was it? Out of reach, out of mind, out of existence, out of sight, out of reach. That's our sin. And it can be like that. And that's what our passage says this morning here. And that out of existence, it's like blotted out. There's an old, old uh, manuscript which um, they, they wrote on, say with ink, but no acid in it. So it was, it was like a, if you wrote on it, you could just get a wet sponge and wipe it out, and it's gone. And that what Peter is saying here to these people, the first simple message of the gospel is, your sins are forgiven if you turn to God and repent, and there be no more. And how often do we break them up in our minds? God has forgotten them if we have faith and trust in him. Now that's the more detail of those three things. Uh, that if we're living uh, in the past, it can be blotted out. And so that now affects our living today. Because in that verse it says that there'll be a time of refreshing. So when one comes to have our sins forgiven and we turn to the Lord Jesus Christ, then we have a new life. And uh, it's a description, really, of the Christian life. Refreshing. We're going to have some refreshments after the service. Refresh. We have a, a, a meeting called, for the old elderly, the refresh. And uh, basically, it's kind of a, a breathing space. A, a kind of a rest. It can be a relaxation. A re relaxation. Our bodies need. Don't they? Our bodies need. Uh, if we just go at full 100% all the time, our bodies will give up. They need to take a holiday, we say. I need a holiday. I need a rest. And that's refreshment. The human spirit. We need it. Everyone does. We can get dry. We can get depressed. We can get overburdened. And we do in life. But here, it says, the blessing here is promised that there is, we're free from the past. And therefore, we're not immune from the pressures of today. We're not immune from sorrow. We're not immune from illness. But, come to, to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's the refreshment, the refreshing. For today, for now. And, and uh, we shall be renewed uh, and, uh, in our living day by day. My peace, I will be with you when you lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, dwell with me in safety. We can have that confidence in him and assurance and peace and refreshment in him. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are stayed on you. Because they trust in you. So do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So that's the now. As we have confessed our sins, as we've been forgiven and the past is gone, we can have life which is refreshing. I have a, a, a story now of a young man, George. I can tell this because it was in the paper as well. A George who came to the junction, he came from Hungary. And George, George's life was dominated by the past. 
very intelligent man, he knew five languages. He'd fled from Hungary, been to Italy, been to Canada, and he arrived in Hexthorpe. And he lived in a warehouse, a deserted warehouse down by the River Don. And he came to the junction one week, and he came in and had a shower and a talk. And a week or so later, I was going to preach in a church in town, and I met George coming over the bridge this way. And I said to him, George, the junction is not open on Sunday. And he said, oh, I'm going to church. Now, that actually, that actually was the opportunity. He'd been loved by the people there at the junction. And his response was, I'm going to church. And so George came to church. And uh, he, he was haunted by his pastor. It was a, a thing in the past which actually haunted him. He couldn't get rid of it. Something awful. Uh, and, uh, and the headline in the paper was, Haunted by the Past. Uh, and uh, he came to the junction regularly for a year or two. A lovely man, but he took to drink to, occasionally to, to hide his past. Uh, and, uh, and, and one day, one day, on a stormy night, he knocked on the junction door and uh, John was out. Sue was in. And he was screaming. And out of his mind, basically. And said the mafia were after him. And uh, he was haunted. He was haunted. He, in actual fact, we found he hadn't been drinking then. He was haunted by his past and could not get rid of it. And one day in church, on a remembered Sunday, we were having the silence, and he shouted out. He said, what do you people know of suffering? Now, he, he never knew anybody, really, what, they, what suffering they'd gone through. But it haunted him. And then he disappeared. And I won't tell you all the details, but John and myself ended up in the coroner's court because uh, he'd been found in the river. And we, we often thought, I wonder, he'd heard the good news. Because one day he said to John the same question, why are you doing this to me? Why are you doing this for me? And he knew of God's love for him. And so we just pray that he knew that before he died. But he was haunted. He could not get rid of his past. And he couldn't have this refreshment and fresh in life because he was weighed down by that. So make sure, make sure that you have this refreshing life. And the future, well, we've been singing about it this morning again and again. One day, one day, we, we, Jesus, we're told, will be here again. And that's part of the good news visibly and it, it'll be personal but in triumph and one day when evil seems to have the ascendancy we cry and have mercy Lord one day chaos seems to reign now but one day justice and peace is coming there'll be a new heaven and a new earth through what Jesus Christ has done for us one day the scripture says swords will be turned into plowshares. Now, does that seem possible now? It does not, as we look at the world. But the Bible assures us that one day, Jesus will appear again. The world may be now groaning in agony, but one day, one day there'll be a new heaven and earth. Love, beauty, order, and peace. And one day as Christian people, as we celebrate this week, a Christian in our church going to heaven, one day, because our sins are blotted out, because we live the life of refreshment, because we have this hope for the future. One day we shall be with him. Christ died for our sins. Christ lives for us now. And Christ will come again. Make sure you know him. So let's pray. Father, we, we, we thank you for your word. And we thank you for today. Lord, we thank you for Jesus. And we pray that all of us here may experience that forgiveness of our sins, that it may be blotted out, that our guilt will go, that we shall have a refreshment in our life, in the Christian life in Jesus' name, and that one day we shall be with him, where there's no crying or tears, or nothing but joy and peace. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.